it's number one on Whitney Houston Live Week. And wow. I I knew Whitney Houston was great and I've you know, we've watched the bodyguard. I watched the 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 biopic movie that's made about her. I think it recently came out. Yeah. And I've listened I, to so many Whitney Houston songs and seen some live videos, but I've never seen any of these. And even knowing how amazing she is, I'm still just blown away at how amazing she is. That's yeah. So this week there's has been no <laughs> It's interesting. It's beautiful. There, there's no resistance to watching any of this. No. You know, no. sometimes you can watch artists and you're like, "All right, you know, like let's all right, this part's a little, uh, you know. Or like you watch one video and you're like, all right, I get it. I don't need to watch the rest of them. No, I understand. But w- Even it, though you might like it, be like, I get it. It's it's addicting. Yeah, it's yeah, so like good. It's addicting. Keep, you just feel going. good. Yeah, yeah. You feel good watching it. But now we're going to go back to a little bit of 80s action. I yeah, want to dance to somebody. We Top got, of the pops. We've only been doing the 90s, Whitney. So here we go. That in 1987. Right. The lady, she's shot in at number 10. She is singing live in the Top of the Pops studio with I Want to Dance with Somebody. Would you welcome Miss Whitney Houston? <laughs> This is just, just classic, uh, Whitney. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's up there. She's she's darling as ever. Her singing just amazingly. Like you know, whenever whenever I hear a pop song being sung live, I'm always expecting like well, this be a little worse, you know, because like yeah, it's very it's generally built, a little worse. It's generally a little worse because they rely on the studio like multiple takes. But no, not her. This honestly might even sound better. Than, than Whitney Houston is generally a little better yeah. than the recording. Um, Top of the Pops. That sounds so British. I would love to host a show called Top of the Pops. Top of the Pops. Yeah, that's that's as British as it comes. The, the stage design here might have been, this is number one of the night for me. I love oh, yeah. the, the <laughs> texture in, this, in the background is wild. And the haze. Yeah, it's flowing. I'd love to get some more shots of it.
Oh, that was that was cute. That was cute. Um, okay, so another thing that I was thinking about while watching this one is like, there's a lot of artists out there or bands, singers, you know, who have a very specific sound or style, and they could be like, you know, for example, Whitney Houston is just here on this random like British TV pop show, you know. Yeah. Um, and for a lot of a lot of artists, you could go on there and be like, oh, I don't know, if this is like the venue, like people aren't gonna get it, like I'm not even pop, or like I don't know, like there could be all these like ideas of insecurity of just like, oh, they're not gonna understand. Whitney Houston is the kind of artist like goes on any stage and people will get it. People are like, yeah, she's amazing. I I understand. Yeah, <laughs> is, she's very accessible in that way. You know, she is. Um, like you just. She's undeniable. You just get on any stage and start singing. You're like, wow, she's really good. <laughs> like at the bare bare minimum, someone's reaction would be like, wow, she's really good. You know, I love that she has these like very 80s pop songs too. Yeah. But then also all those ballads. And you can just see, like she can go up there and she can do this. But it, it's just funny because she's singing these pop songs, which don't. It's funny because a song like this, to be fair, doesn't really garner the type of voice she has. It doesn't need it. It's no, a pop right. song. It's fun. You, you, right. know, you just you, dance around. You're having a good time. You don't need Whitney Houston to sing a song, but the fact that she is, is awesome. Oh, yeah. She sounds incredible. Yeah. Like, it's so it's such overkill to have Whitney Houston <laughs> singing this song because yeah. it just doesn't need to... She, You don't need someone throwing in those amazing growls and all of that freaking... Yeah. And all, for, all for of what it. she does. You don't need it for this song to be a hit because it's like yeah. it feels like a hit song. But the fact that she is singing it, it just feels extra special. Be like, ah, I'm so happy we got Whitney to sing this one. <laughs> yeah, it's so undeniable. Like it's already such a fun pop song. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of fun pop songs they don't need. I mean, yeah, they, there's they don't need that. I mean, what the greatest, good, they're one of the greatest voices of all time. Yeah, they yeah, don't need it. I think but, we, <laughs> in in fewer words, it's like this is the type of song. Like a good song can carry an okay singer, is what you're saying. Yeah. But this very good song got one of the best singers that ever existed. Well, I would also say that like all the ballads are very good songs too, but other singers, even pretty good ones, those they songs would, would just fall flat. Yeah, they wouldn't. Because you justice. need to be a ballad singer. You know, you need to have that power. Mm -hmm. And uh, Whitney, Whitney's got it in spades, so she's already slinging this song around like. She's just having fun with this one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so there was a moment. Uh, I can't remember exactly where it was, but she she's only hitting one note, but th the way she changes her tone around, her vocal tone around the, the entirety of the held out note, it's like that's what makes it so special. She just, just doesn't go, ah, uh, like just flat. That's why you're saying other singers might fall flat, even if they're hitting the notes. Mm -hmm. Some people, when they sing, they sound flat, even though they are hitting the note. It's because their their vocal tone is flat. And it's like there's no interest. There's no like fun. Um, it doesn't take you on a journey of the note. It's just like there's the note, and it's just sitting there. Uh, okay, let me find that. <laughs> Things coming up. That. Uh, okay. That. Did you hear how her tone changes around? She got, well, she goes from like an ah to an oh. oh yeah. In yeah, the middle yeah. of it. So it's like this journey of the note instead of just holding yeah. that My vowel. lonely heart calls. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. She changes the vowel shape in a way. That uh, yeah, it brings you on a ride, like ramps you up into it. But she also can ramp it up. My lonely heart goes. You know, can even bring it higher too. Yeah, yeah. she could. But she's yeah, she's just. So that's those are the intric intricacies of like a great vocalist. They like, they just make every note interesting. Which is which you know could be, it. it I mean, it could be planned. I'm not saying it isn't, but it also mostly could just be feel like this just feels better and. That, right, that yeah, is a yeah. massive talent for someone to have is understanding this feels better 
and everyone else is going to understand that it feels better. They're not going to know why. They're not going to think about why. But I know that for everyone else, this is going to feel better. And that's the thing. Like she might not even be contemplating these things. No, She's no, just no. Doing it out of feeling. And everyone's agreeing, like, yes, it does well, feel good. That, that's the thing. She has that into her feeling is the correct intuition that connects yeah. with the largest audience. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. a lot of people can think things, be like, this makes the most sense, and every, and like, fifty percent of people or eighty percent of people are like, you are crazy. You, don't you are like, wrong. Yeah, that's not what we like. That makes us feel weird. That ain't it, champ. And there's and, and, and what's interesting too is that like, yeah, everyone in the audience doesn't think about exactly what makes certain no, things special no, no, no. and like, like you said she's not even thinking about it it has to be this natural communication mm-hmm. of something that is wonderful and that is her choice her artistic choice regardless of whether she actually thought about it but a feeling like i i, I like the way this is this is going to sound the way that i like that it sounds and then the audience can be like and we all agree yeah and like you gotta hope that you got that I'm all, I'm only analyzing it because i'm sitting here on a reaction channel listen to it on headphones yeah. like being like, all right, why is this so amazing? Like, I already understand that she's amazing, but why? So I'm like, figure figuring it out. Like, I was thinking, I was like, okay, that's what she's doing. That's why this is so incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like, she's not sitting there at home thinking like, all right, if I just do this around this one note, and then what do I do for this one? Yeah, she's yeah, just, yeah. it's all feel. I mean, if anything... And actually, you talk, did you talk about this? You were, you were watching a documentary about her... I watched the biopic, biopic. I don't know how to say that word. I know. It, it was. I a, think it's biopic. It was a movie based on her life. No, but didn't you watch a documentary of, or at least someone talking about what it was like to work with her? Uh, oh there, yes, yes, yeah. I did watch a documentary. There was a music producer who said that when they worked with other artists, they they would have them kind of they would have them sing it for the first time just to hear them sing the song. And then they would give them instruction, be like, all right, this and this sound great, but can in this one, can we do it a little more like this and blah, blah. And they would like direct and guide them uh, through the song. And they said when they worked with Whitney Houston, she would just like sing it one time through and all of it was better than they had imagined in their head. Like it was, there, there was no direction. It was just like, oh yeah, I mean, that's, that's better than I thought it was going to be, <laughs> you know, like every single part. And then so like just for shits and giggles, they would get a couple more takes to see what else would happen because they're like, all right, this girl's magic. Let's see what else she can do, you know? And at the core, that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. So like someone else who probably came in and sang that that first take, but they sang it. They sang it in key. They hit all the notes. And they sang it well. And they sang it well. But it's like, ooh, you know what? That, That This is what this producer's job is to do is to kind of be like, oh, maybe if you, you know, to, to actually do the analysis that we're talking about mm-hmm. of what she's done and whether she's conscious of it or not, like literally thinking about it or planning about it. We don't, I don't know that, but like, it seems like, like it's their job to be like, Ooh, we can turn it this way. Like, I know what sounds good. I'm a producer. And then she right. comes in and she's like, I already know what sounds good. I already know everything. <laughs> and I came in here and I sang it for you and you're like, Oh wow. You knew better than me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so my job... Like they couldn't imagine it sounding that good. And so I, I quit because now my job has been taken. <laughs> well, I mean, they're the, also the songwriter. Joking. I know. I'm because like a lot of songwriters aren't necessarily good singers or might, might not even be able to like stay in pitch, you know? Yeah. Um, but they can write a really great song and then... It's also stuff like that. Like that's what someone like Rick Rubin would be doing. Right. Noticing yeah, yeah. things like that. No, oh, can you can you turn it this way or can you can you twist it? Right. Can you sing it? In this way, as opposed to singing that way, it's the same notes. It's That's the like same all words. Rick Rubin would do because he's not even a songwriter, yeah, or a musician for that matter. Yeah, he's just like a direct, a music director, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But Whitney Houston knew how to share, seemingly really naturally knew how to share her her vision of what a song was going to be, and it just connected with so many people mm-hmm. at the same time. It connected with me. Yeah, because uh, she didn't. She didn't. As far as I'm aware, and they depicted this in the movie, she didn't write. She, um, the writers would, it was all like cassettes and CDs back in the day, and she would just listen through songs, and if she liked it, she would cut a version of it. And uh, yeah, if she didn't. Then, she didn't write the lyrics either? No. Nah, I, I, according to this movie, you're saying? According to the movie, she didn't write. I mean, maybe she rewrote some lyrics to fit more her feelings. Yeah. But um, 
Yeah, as far as as far as like you know, she wasn't sitting down at the piano and like playing chords or nothing like that. I mean, it, it, as far as this movie depicted, right? Yeah, <laughs> so we, maybe she did more. Don't don't come at it. <laughs> she wrote. She plenty. actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, we don't. I, know. Wa- sure, I watched a did. movie. <laughs> if she did, and you know that, wonderful. Uh, anyways, our credibility is out the door. Uh, it's fine. Shoot. We never had it. Um, but yeah, it's, but yeah. I mean. What else can you say? She's amazing. I would love to have a Whitney Houston live week too, because uh, I got I, I don't know. I mean, I just yeah, just, I guess just a reason to listen to more. <laughs> yeah, and thanks. we'll just continue to try to find things that compliment her. I'm gonna go. We're running I'm gonna, out of adjectives here. Yeah, I'm gonna go find a, th- a thesaurus. A thesaurus. A thesaurus. <laughs> I'm gonna go find a thesaurus and uh, and try to work that in a little bit more. I mean, because that, that, that it's so funny because like that's what we've gotten to is just like what. We can say that's all great. We can just say, oh, it's amazing. It's unbelievable. It makes me feel this way. That's what we did on the first video. And then it's just the second video. And slowly it's just turned into like, yeah, not, and there's nothing less to talk about besides trying to figure out exactly what may, we need to find, you know, like the wavelengths and how they resonate maybe with the human spirit at we, this point. We're going to get more scientific. But also and, uh, mix in the spiritual and metaphysical at the same time. This yeah. is going to get really annoying like if we every, keep doing this. Every level of, so yeah, uh, spiritual, metaphysical, physical. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the biological science of like what she's actually doing. Yeah, and then we're gonna move into uh, starting a class that you can take at a local community <laughs> college, or maybe just a rec center, and it'll be uh, the philosophy of uh, of Whitney Houston, or the philosophy around the sound. And the class of Whitney will be Houston. called the Voice One Hundred and One. That's right. It makes so much sense now why people would call her the Voice because. You know, I, I heard that nickname. I was like, oh, yeah, because she's a great singer. But then the more and more you dive into it, you're like, no, 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 she's not just a great singer. Like, she's the premier singer of, like, our lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well. Great week. Thank, thank you, you, M. Thank you, M. And uh, hopefully we get a we get a week, week too. I'd love yeah, it. Sure.